Kia ora New Zealand and your bulletin today. HEB construction workers are said to be lost for words over the fatal shooting of 67-year-old George Tairoa from Hamilton. Mr Tairoa was gunned down yesterday while working on a stop-go sign on a one-way bridge along Tram Road in the Kinleith Forest. Police say George was shot after stopping a vehicle so the logging truck could cross the bridge. And the Greens are furious at news there's been a GM breach at Lincoln University in Christchurch. An investigation is underway to discover how a genetically modified fungus managed to spread outside the university. Green MP Stephen Browning says the breach isn't good enough. Can they be confident that it hasn't gone beyond that facility? So the Crown Research Institutes need to be held to account far more rigorously than they have been today. Axe John Banks has made another attack on Labour leader David Shearer today. Last year, Mr Banks was on the receiving end of intense criticism from Labour over what he remembered about the money his 2010 mayoral campaign received from Kim.com. Now he's hammering David Shearer for forgetting about his UN bank account. He has had a memory lapse and he should live by those ideals and fall on his sword. I thought he would have done it yesterday. Violence continues in Iraq as the country marks a decade of war and unrest. It's 10 years since the United States-led coalition invaded the country to topple the Saddam Hussein regime. Car bombings around Baghdad has left at least 65 dead and scores more wounded. The bloodshed has sparked fears that sectarian-based violence could rise in retaliation. At least 17 people have died in landslides triggered by heavy rains in a mountainous area of Brazil. Dozens more have been left homeless in and around Petropolis, 68 kilometres north of Rio de Janeiro. Two rescue workers are among the dead. In his inauguration ceremony last night in Rome, Pope Francis was driven through the Vatican, waving to over 100,000 pilgrims who packed into St. Peter's Square. He kissed babies and stopped to give this disabled man a blessing. The pontiff received from his cardinals the pallium and the fisherman's ring, a personalised signet ring traditionally worn by popes in honour of St. Peter. He then led the masses in prayer where he urged leaders from around the world to protect nature and all people, particularly the poorest. He said that true leadership and power is really about service. And from the squash court to politics, Dame Susan DeVoy is the first woman to be appointed to the role of Race Relations Commissioner. The former squash world champion is the 10th person to hold the position in the 41 years since it was established. Justice Minister Judith Collins says the fact she's a celebrity of sorts has nothing to do with her appointment. She insists she's the right person for the job because she's highly principled and has integrity. And the proposal for an aquarium in Wellington should help boost the capital's economy. The proposal for a $35 million ocean exploration centre has been unveiled today and will include seven different underwater habitats found around New Zealand. Mayor Celia Wade-Brown says it's good to have new ideas for the city. We hope it will also keep visitors here another day. It's a great complement to other attractions that we have in Wellington. And in sport, Mary Fisher has broken her third world record in 24 hours at the Swimming National Champs in Auckland. The Paralympian has smashed the old mark by more than 10 seconds in the 200 metre butterfly in a time of 2 minutes 50.93. And good news this morning for Marmite fans, the black spread was back on store shelves for the first time in a year after production was halted due to the earthquake damage at Sanitarium's Christchurch factory. And the official word from Marmite fans is that it tastes just the same. And finally tonight, I leave you with scenes from the new movie remake of The Wizard of Oz. The film, called Oz the Great and Powerful, follows a magician played by James Franco as he's taken to the Emerald City where he's destined to claim the throne. It belongs to you, but only after you defeat the Wicked Witch. The new film is in 3D and offers rich visuals and great special effects. But time will only tell if audiences from around the world will appreciate the new take on the old classic, where in 1939 Dorothy, played by Julie Garland in her ruby slippers, made history. And that was your news for Wednesday the 20th of March. Ka kite anō.